Hi, my name is Adam. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining us today. Today we're going to talk about DIY investing. And this video is not about if you should do it or if you shouldn't do it. But a lot of you are looking to transition to DIY investing and even more of you have transitioned that way over the last two to five plus years and have mixed feelings on it. And I talk to a lot of you every single day on this. So I want to give some feedback. This is both my personal feedback as well as feedback from a lot of you viewers so that if either you're looking to go DIY or you are DIY already and just not sure if you should be there you're kind of confused that kind of stuff I want to give you some tools and tips to help you move forward in a better fashion so the first thing I want to talk about is why people have transitioned to DIY and there's a few reasons for this reason number one is DIY investing is more available to Canadians it's available to everyone across the world really sure there might be some countries you can't but in Canada here and in the US it's very easy to do DIY investing there's a lot of platforms there's a lot of low-cost platforms that make it very easy to go out and buy the stocks that you you want to buy and sell the stocks, hold the portfolio and do it all on your own. Companies like Quest Trade, Q Trade, now Well Simple more recently, and all your big banks have online brokerages where you can buy stocks directly. Some of them charge a fee still, maybe $10 per transaction. Some of them are free and they make money in other ways, uh, FX, currency and whatnot. About 2013, 2014 is where the big shift started to happen. And we've seen it ramp up, especially over COVID. Uh, when the market dropped, a lot of people jumped to DIY, whether it was full two feet in or just started dabbling in it. Uh, you're able to buy stocks for cheap or free sometimes on these platforms. The second reason we see people go to DIY, and I think this is the biggest one, and I can't blame people for doing it, is they've had a very bad experience with their advisor, with their mutual fund salesperson, whoever it is. And a lot of people have reached out to us and said, look, Adam, I'd love to work with you, but I've, I feel like I've worked with five people in your space and it just hasn't worked out well. And I don't want you to be the six. And that's why we explain, we definitely do things a little bit differently at Parallel Wealth, but I understand your guys' frustration. I talk to people, that say, look, I went to DIY last year, but it was because the 20 years, 20 years before that, my advisor made me no money, which is mind boggling to me. I don't even know how you do that. You could throw darts and make money the last 20 years. So a lot of you are sitting in mutual funds, whether it's at a bank, at a big financial institution, wherever it is. And most of you, if not 99% of you, are paying both an investment fee and a management fee. And I have a video on that. If you haven't watched that, I'll click it up here. Basically breaks down you know, what you're actually paying in your investments. A lot of you don't pay attention to this. So a lot of you that have started to pay attention say, whoa, wait, I'm paying two, two and a half percent for the investing. I'm not getting any advice and I'm paying 1% plus for the planning advice. So let's just knock that off and, and I'll do the investing on my own. I don't blame you guys for doing that. That makes sense to me. If you're paying for something you're not getting, jump ship, find a better alternative, a better solution for you. It makes no sense and it costs you a lot in retirement to be paying a professional one, one and a half percent a year that isn't providing value. They're not doing tax estate and planning for you, they're just collecting a fee. If that's you, definitely you need to look at different options. The problem I've found with people just jumping ship, I like to call it, from you know, working with a, an advisor that maybe wasn't providing that value or pro providing no value, they're just collecting a fee, that's frustrating. But a lot of you have jumped all the way to the DIY ship and it's not working too well. And you've also cut out the advice. And yes, you weren't getting advice before, but there needs to be this middle ground of advice. Now you can hire a fee-for-service advisor like our firm, there's others out there, or you can kind of do a kind of a hybrid DIY where there's some advice built in as well. So, but you need to make sure two things. First thing is if you go to DIY investing, you have to understand how to invest. What's your philosophy? What's your research? Like how are you picking these stocks and investments? Maybe you're just doing passive uh, ETF. How are you diversified within your ETFs? There's more to it than just lumping money over and throwing it at a different, you know, one or two or three different ETFs. But what I find, and I think this is where this channel has got some traction, there's this middle ground, this middle slice that's vastly important. In fact, Vanguard did some research a couple years ago on this. So I like that this research comes from Vanguard, who's an ETF, like they're the DIY product provider, they did research to see like how much value does an advisor offer? Uh, and we'll also link it down below, but it's a great article because it breaks down that the advisor actually does provide a lot of value if they're actually working to provide value. Again, there's too many advisors and I see this all the time and I know a lot of them, unfortunately, that just collect a fee, right? They're on the golf course all day long, they collect a fee and they don't provide any service. They don't provide videos like this. They don't do one-on-one -on -one meetings and deep dive into your financial plan. Just make sure if you jump over here, if you're like, you know, I, I enjoy the DIY, I enjoy the stock picking or ETF or whatever you're investing in, just make sure there's more to the retirement and tax plan 
down the road than just the investment. The third group of you that have jumped to DIY or more, you have an itch to scratch. This is maybe a bit me as well. I have all my money professionally managed through BCV Asset Management. They're an investment management firm out of Winnipeg. They manage about $4 billion of assets and we send a lot of our clients to them. We're not owned by them. They just do a really good job managing assets. So I like that. It, it, they buy blue chip dividend stocks. I know what I own. I own, know why I own it. I know what I'm paying, all that. It's very transparent and I like that. But I have that itch and I need to scratch it. So I personally have an investment account at Wellsimple. I have Questrade as well, actually. But most of my you know play money is at Wellsimple. It's a you know cheap to free online option to buy those stocks that BCV doesn't hold for me. It's my play money though. And this is really a lot of you get that itch and you jump too heavily into DIY. To me, if you're moving to DIY investing, here's how to start. And again, I'm not an investor. This is just my personal opinion. All I'm saying is you need a system. How are you going to do this? Don't just put two feet in at one time if you've never done this before, right? You probably want to invest through different seasons of markets. I mean, if you started in 2018, you know, late 2018, it dipped, it ran up 2020, obviously we dipped down, then we spiked right back up. And now we're hitting another, you know, recession type of environment. So you want to go through a few of these, you want to go through the ups and downs, figure out what happens. If you've been invested in, in some of these companies that did really well in 2020, you're probably down and some of these companies like PayPal are down 70 80%. So you need to experience this and you don't want to experience it with all your portfolio. So just make sure that you kind of ease in work with some play money first, figure out the routine, this could take years to happen. But that's okay. This is your retirement money. This is money you worked hard to earn. Don't just kind of throw it to DIY investing because you're frustrated with your advisor. It's going to cost you more over here, dip into it, figure it out and ramp it up over time if it's the right fit for you. So when we look at DIY investing, obviously one of the big grabs to it or the attractions to it is the low cost of it, right? It's, it's free. It's very low cost, but make sure you understand where those fees are coming from. Some DIY investment firms will charge an annual fee per account. Some of them charge a quarterly fee per account. Some charge and most charge very high transfer out fees. So a lot of you will try different firms, your bank and Qtrade and well, simple, whatever. And then you'll say, okay, whichever one like I like best, I'll transfer out. But some of those transfer fees, I've seen upwards of $300 per account. But in fact, we've kind of amalgamated some client accounts here to BCV. And one client had 13 accounts kind of spread everywhere. And his transfer fees were about $1,500. Some firms will cover those transfer fees. So if you transfer $5,000 or more or whatever it is, every firm has a different rule. But most firms will reimburse you if you're transferring enough. So make sure to ask if I move my money to you, will you reimburse any fees that I get charged over here transfer fees? If you have DFC mutual funds, that kind of stuff that will not be covered, but transfer fees will be. So another area that there's a lot of fees gathered from these investment firms that you may not be aware of. And while simple trade to me is the best example of this, and I'm going to pick on them because I use them and I learned the hard way. I can buy and sell stocks for free. But when I went to buy a US stock, it took my Canadian currency, converted it, charged it one and a half percent upside. I would buy my US stock. When I sold it, it would convert it back to Canadian and charge me another one and a half. So I was losing 3% on every transaction. And that means well, Simple's making 3%. And that's why, you know, they're going to go public probably here in the next year or two and make billions of dollars because they know how to make money. So we have to be careful that we don't think, hey, we're going to this low cost or no cost platform. It costs me nothing. It's always going to cost you. Remember, these companies aren't in the business to lose money. They're making money somewhere. Make sure you understand where they're making it and do your research on what makes the most sense for what you're looking to do. If you're only buying Canadian stocks, there's probably a better platform than if you're looking to buy international stocks. Second to fees is financial expertise. And what I mean by this is, do you have the financial expertise to actually go out there and pick the stocks and the bonds and the ETFs and what you're going to build your portfolio around? Again, a lot of you are doing this close to retirement or maybe even in retirement. And what you do drastically matters. You cannot afford to lose your retirement fund because that's your retirement. How much financial expertise do you have to go and pick stocks. I know for me, I, I do this stuff every day. I'm more on the planning side than the investing and, and going through companies, obviously. But I still have a good understanding. I, you know, I sold mutual funds for 12 years. And even for me, like my play money, I'm buying companies that I think are really cool companies that have a lot of upside that are kind of changing the world that just don't fit the BCV model. BCV Asset Management, they have a team of nine portfolio managers, analysts. They have a whole team that all they do every day is dig, dig, dig into these stocks. Why would I think I can do a better job than they can? Sure, I'm paying them a small fee and that's where the balance has to happen. Are they covering their fee in a bit more? That's how I look at it. If I go out and just buy an ETF on a platform like Well Simple, I'm paying Well Simple 0.5. 
and I'm paying maybe 0.1 to 0.2, let's say, for the ETF. Some are a lot higher, some are lower. So my cost is 0.7. So can BCV provide upside above 0.7 to offset their fee? And if they can, then I think that makes more sense because there's deeper research done versus me trying to figure out what ETF to buy and all that. That's how I view it. A lot of you have this expertise. You, you dig into this. I know, I know people personally that they do this for fun, but they do a really good job at it. So just make sure you have the expertise and the knowledge and the understanding of what it takes to go out and actually build a portfolio, a diversified portfolio, rebalancing. And I'll always say this. I've, I've said this for the 17 years I've been in the business. It's really easy to buy a stock. It's really hard to sell a stock. It's it's really easy to buy an ETF. It's really hard to sell an ETF. It's really easy to go and buy that car you've always wanted. It's hard to sell that car. It's, it's with anything. Stocks is probably at the top of that list. We buy stocks because we like the company. We like what it gives us. Maybe it pays us back a dividend, whatever it is. At the end of the day, you buy into a company or a stock of a company because you like it, not because you want to sell it. But one day, the majority of you don't have the $10 million to live off the dividends. You have to start liquidating those stocks. And to me, that's the hardest part. And I've seen that. So we talk about the psychological side of retirement. There's a psychological side to DIY investing. So if you're a DIY investor, you're coming up to retirement. And let's say you own a stock portfolio with you know, 50 stocks in there. And we build out a plan for you. And it says, look, Jim and Sally, you need to pull out 50,000 each from your RIF over the next 10, 15 years. Your first question should be and will be, okay, but what am I selling to get that 50,000? And I say, well, that's on you. Like you're the DIY investor. You're the investment manager at this point. That's on you to decide. You know, we've seen this. People that were DIY as they hit retirement, they transition back to a managed portfolio. And to me, that makes sense. That's how I would do it too. I don't know what I'd want to sell. I, for my little play money, I love everything I own. In fact, I own some companies that have lost a lot of money, but I still believe in them. The reason I bought them in the first place is still the reason I own them today. When I have my money at BCV, when I hit retirement, I'll let them figure out what to sell. They're doing the, the research and that. They know what to sell. They know probably what makes the most sense for me. But as a DIY investor, you need to figure this out. Again, if you have a good system for it, it can work. If you don't, it can really backfire. And again, especially in downturn like this you may need some cash flow have you prepared for that have you prepared your portfolio for that a lot of people that have met that are DIY investors have done a great job they might follow someone uh, and, and you'll know, mimic their portfolio my one concern always is you've done well but as you transition to the decumulation phase what is your strategy for that I have never ever seen a youtuber a finance person anyone talk publicly about a decumulation phase I talk about it you have to decumulate RSP meltdown all that that's a tax strategy. You need to figure that out yourself. And for a lot of you, that may be challenging. So again, it's easy to make money in good times and have good investments. But again, there is a point where you hit and you got to decumulate that asset. Just make sure you have a plan to do that. The next thing you need to look at is stress. So if you're going to go to DIY investing, expect your stress level to increase. And to me, I always talk about this. When you hit retirement, your stress level should be on the floor. It needs to be on the floor. Now there's going to be life events that happen where it spikes up. My in-laws retired almost exactly a year ago, uh, about six months later, uh, my niece was diagnosed with cancer, which I've talked about on this channel. And of course that brings your stress level. You know, my in-laws are working their stress levels up here. Yeah, now we're way down here because we're retired and then your niece gets cancer, it spikes, right? And that's natural. There's going to be life events that spike your stress. But the ones that you can control, I always say control it, especially in retirement or getting close to retirement. You know, you want to enjoy retirement and, and people that are DIY investors. I talked to a lot of you that are DIY investors in retirement. The feedback I get most of the time is, Adam, I love doing it. I've done well. You know, it's kind of a passion hobby of mine, but I do find it takes a lot of time. You know, when I'm down on vacation, I can't just turn off. I have to always be watching it because I'm worried about it. A lot of you during times like this, when the market's down, you're down 15, 20, 25%. You're very worried about it. You don't know how to react. And some of you are reacting in the worst way in that you're selling everything and you're actually like crystallizing those losses. Now, I don't know if we're going to go up from here or down from here, but if you look at the long-term trend, I talk about this a lot here, the long-term trend of the market is up. So can you hold on long enough? Again, you need to have these strategies in place because these market corrections are going to come again and again. So that's part of the fee you pay to an investment manager to kind of shuffle that stress off to them. So what's that worth to you? Again, if you're sitting over here in mutual funds, you're paying two, two and a half, three percent. We've seen some accounts over three percent lately, and it's really just an investment and you're not getting any planning advice, anything like that. You need to get out of that. You definitely need to get out of that. And so many of you watching this video are sitting in your mutual funds at a major you know, financial institution. 
and you're not getting advice. You're paying a lot of money every year. A lot of you will have hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars sitting in this type of product. You're paying an advisor thousands to tens of thousands of dollars a year and they're not doing a single thing. There needs to be a change. Now, is it DIY? Is it a hybrid? Is it somewhere in between? Is it just finding a better advisor that does investments and proper planning? Is it a full swing over to DIY? Probably for a small percentage of you that really enjoy it, that love the research, that love doing that. For the others, it's kind of this in between. Now, it may be going to a managed portfolio at Wellsimple or, or a platform like that, where they actually have a team that pick the, the ETFs and build that managed portfolio for you. So it's low cost and managed for you. You don't have to decide what to buy and sell. And then hiring a fee-for-service advisor or something like that in between to fill that gap and provide that value there. It may be just searching your area, searching across Canada to find someone that sells or provides an investment solution and also provides planning and actually gives that service as well. There are options out there. I talked to a lot of you that say, look, Adam, I was good with the planning side until I started watching your videos. And now I realize that I wasn't so good on the planning side. Like the planning side people underestimate, I do it every day. You know, we save our clients on average hundreds of thousands of dollars on every plan. It just day after day after day. It makes a difference where you pull money from, how you pull money. I did a plan yesterday, a plan delivery to a client. And I said, look, if we just structured a little bit differently here and the numbers didn't look too different, it would save them about $140,000 in taxes and provide much better estate plan for their kids. Small changes can be a drastic effect within the plan, depending on how everything's structured. So there's no clear cut answer if you should go DIY or hybrid or somewhere in between. There's a lot of options for you, but if you're just sitting on the sidelines being kind of passive and not doing anything about it, it's time to do something about it. If you're looking for fee for service planning, uh, professional money management, we do have some options in house here. Uh, check out our uh, website, parallelwealth.com slash planning. If you're looking for investments, it's parallelwealth.com slash investments. You can learn about more about our services, what we do. Again, I'm not saying you have to come work with us at all. That's not why I do these videos. I do these videos to educate you guys, give you guys the tools. But a lot of you have reached out, you don't know where to go and you you know, you know build trust with us through these videos. We're happy to help, happy to have that chat with you or find someone in your area. But again, if you're sitting in this bucket, it's time to get out. Make that decision today and start moving forward, getting you know better investment, better planning, and just a better situation as you head into retirement. So thank you so much for joining us in this video and we'll see you in the next one.